What can I say? Heresy has taken the wargaming world by storm with the release of the new edition by Games Workshop. And with it, of course, comes some absolutely mega new YouTube content from some awesome creators. Lockie from Zorpazorp and Ollie from Broadsword Wargaming are no strangers to some of the most ambitious and massive scale battle reports on the platform, and their venture into the Horus Heresy with the utterly mental Mark of Kalth campaign is nothing short of mind-blowing. But of course to play out these utterly crazy battle reports, you need painted minis, and this is where I come in to help these boys out. Hey Benji, you're always up for providing some free labour, I mean YouTube collaborations with heaps of exposure, aren't you? Yes, we need an ultramarine recon squad painting up for this campaign. You'll be fine with that, right? How can I say no to all this delicious exposure? Count me in guys, I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. So, the recon team. Experienced Space Marines whose purpose is to covertly infiltrate behind enemy lines and gather intelligence, and generally cause havoc and disarray in enemy forces. Armed to the teeth with a variety of specialised war gear including sniper rifles and stealth gear, these guys really are a badass squad and not to be messed with. The kit I'm putting together here is the Mark IV Recon Marines from Forge World, and it contains 5 minis with different weapon options. Now, not knowing the rules, I simply went with Rule of Call whilst assembling these, opting to give them a mixture of sniper rifles and shotguns. I have no idea what the best loadout is, but hell, at least they'll look cool on the tabletop. After priming them and giving them a quick zenithal highlight, I decided that I'd try and use the airbrush to get down some of the main colours, in this case, the blue armour. Airbrushing has become a really valuable tool in my hobby toolbox, especially for priming and zenithal highlighting, but it's something that I've really wanted to practice and improve for a while, especially for blending and creating some more subtle layers and highlights on my minis. Starting off with Proacryl Blue, I threw down the base coats to all the armour sections, and then gradually added small amounts of white to the cup, making sure to mix thoroughly before applying the highlight in gentle gradients. The great thing about airbrushing, provided you work with thin layers, is you can move backwards and forwards between your tones. So if you go to start with your highlights, it's no problem. Simply go back and add a bit more shading and vice versa. I don't think I've perfected this yet, but as they say, practice makes perfect. I'll keep at it and hopefully my next attempt will be a little bit better, but I'm happy with these guys as they are now. Now with these guys being scouts, I imagine them being adept at skulking and hiding in the darkness. So to help them with this, I decided to give them super dark cloaks, painting any of their cloakage with Proacryl Coal Black. This paint gives a super matte finish, so I think it would help them blend in with shadowy backgrounds. I won't go into too much detail about how I painted the rest of these minis because, well, it's all pretty unremarkable really. I simply blocked in the rest of the colours before starting on the fun bit. Now in my last video I used some streak and grime for the first time and in all honesty I've absolutely fallen in love with this stuff. For models like these where you're after a really gritty grimy finish, it's perfect for adding some intense shading and giving that cool grimdark look. I slathered it all over the models and allowed it to dry with a little help from the hairdryer before reducing it down a little with some artist white spirit and removing the excess with a cotton bud. This leaves the grime in all the recesses but removes it from the higher areas so the airbrush work I did earlier isn't entirely wasted. Now normally I'd be basing any models that I finish painting, however I'm going to be leaving this to Lockie as he wants them to match up with the rest of his ultramarines, so for now I'm just going to box them up and ship them to the other side of the world, let's just hope they get there in one piece. So whilst these guys are off in the post, I've had an idea about creating my own version of these scouts. Don't get me wrong, they really are cool models, but to me they do just kind of look like Mark IV marines with a cape, and at £44 for a squad of 5, they're not the cheapest models either. 
Now, a long time ago, I did start building some Space Marine Scouts from the old plastic kit, which I had intended to make into a kill team, but as with a lot of projects, I never got round to finishing them. I got to the stage of putting the bodies and weapons together, but then realized that the heads are absolutely atrocious. They have these weird visors on them that make them look like Cyclops out of the old X-Men TV show, which, if you ask me, isn't a great look for a Space Marine Scout. I decided to resurrect this project, but instead of using the supplied heads, I raided my bits box and found a bunch of extra heads that came on the Death Watch veteran sprue. They have a cool little antenna on the side, which to me makes them fit that scouty aesthetic I'm after, and scale-wise, they're just about on the money. I took a little time to carve away some of the excess plastic from the connection points to help them fit better, and scraped away any inquisitorial iconography with a craft knife. Now this did take a bit of work to get them to fit right, but by carefully slicing away the plastic and regularly test fitting, I managed to get them to fit pretty snugly on the scout bodies. I used a small dab of plastic glue to fit them in place, and I feel like I have some pretty passable scouts for a fraction of the price of the Forge World ones. I'm yet to settle on what chapter I'll be painting my Horus Heresy army yet, but I painted this guy up as an Ultramarine, and I think he looks pretty convincing. I'd certainly be happy to chuck him down on the table. It seems that my marines did make it safely to Australia, so make sure you check out Zorpazorp and Broadsaw's battle reports, and keep an eye out for them in action. So which ones do you think are best, the genuine forge world models, or my knockoff cheap kit bashed marines? Let me know down in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, make sure you go and check out the links to all my affiliates, and all the other good stuff, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.